All right, welcome to Stamscapes Live or the Stamscapes Replay, whichever one you happen to be looking at. This is going to be... It's not really going to be a reflection card. It's this interior format here where I usually place um, some silver cardstock down here to reflect what's going on in the upper area here. But I was thinking this area right here could just be a sky. And this area down here could just be the surface going out into whatever the horizon line or whatever you place into this area. Now you can place anything up here. I was thinking about clouds would be really fantastic or something of that sort. But instead of having something silver down here to reflect what's going on up there, we're just going to do um, what would represent our surface down here going out into that horizon area. So I thought that could be a good format for this type of paper right here that's so kind of Oh, I don't know, whatever, expressive, okay? This is some um, holographic cardstock. It's not the holographic printable vinyl, okay? So it re does require um, specialty media to adhere to it. In this case, I'm going to be just using Stazon, which a lot of you have in your, uh, whatever, your supplies. And this should be a relatively, I don't know, quick and easy scene here. I'm going to be using this cardstock for the um, upper area, and then I will use um, just some glossy cardstock for the bottom. I figured the glossy cardstock for the bottom would match. It's not going to match, but it'll match maybe better um, this top portion kind of, I don't know, electric um, visual than, you know, the flat matte cardstock. But, you know, it just depends on whatever you put up in that upper area here. So I'm going to be stamping some of these palm trees here. I think I lifted that one too late. Yeah, here we go. I lifted that one too late and the, uh, a lot of the ink came out. So I'm going to use that as kind of a a background image and we'll go with a, a faster impression of this. I'm not used to using stays on on um, these types of foils like that so I don't know keep that in mind. Okay so I did a much quicker impression like that so we have a darker impression down here and a lighter one to represent the background okay and what that's going to represent again is the horizon like that look at that right there all right in the sky. This area down here, I'm going to try to... I, I hesitate to say match because, you know, we're... Nothing we do down here is going to match what's going on up here. Hello, Linda and Kay! Uh, yeah, I had to get this, uh, this one down, Linda. I was thinking I've been doing these um, uh, reflection cards, but I was thinking this area doesn't have to be a reflection down here. This area can just be sky, and this area could be this surface area. So I thought I'd try it out. I do think the reflection cards are super dynamic, but I thought this could be effective, and uh, I don't know, it could be used for, I don't know, a different take on that uh, kind of interior folded card spread um, technique. All right, so uh, I'm going to do the... I was. I've been thinking about these baby sea turtles going out into kind of a more kind of dynamic sky. You know, when those, uh, you know, we see these baby turtles on TV or whatever, you know, these days on, you know, whatever the internet crawling out to see. I thought it's kind of like a magical moment. And um, I thought matching that type of moment with um, some sort of dynamic sky would be interesting. Um, and I don't know, these 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 holographics um, seem to be, <laughs> I don't know, the most dynamic um, types of uh, surfaces that we have out there in terms of, uh, I don't know, just the colorful, Um, intense, reflective, and moving surfaces. So, 
I thought I would give it a try. So this is what this is kind of the base is going to look like. Okay, so this still represents the horizon out there, right? Okay, so I'm going to put something like this right here, okay? And naturally, unfortunately, we're not going to have anything reflecting down here unless I did it on silver foil or something like that. Might be an idea for the future, but I thought I would just do a regular scene down here. Okay, so this is an area down here that I'm going to make into um, a nighttime scenario just because this particular um, holographic foil, uh, not ho uh, yeah, holographic foil cardstock, um, you know, it looks dark like that, okay? So I'm going to darken this, and I don't know, I see these sea turtles kind of going out to uh, sea at nighttime a lot of times. Um, I don't know, I was reading up on some of that when I was doing those designs, and I think they, I don't know, they, they, wait, they can tell by the temperature, I think, or something like that of when to emerge. So, let's see here. Um, okay, so we have a lot of area down here. I've been stamping this lower and having sky and surface down here um, for these things. Maybe I should have stamped the larger seaside cove, but I have a lot of space down here. Okay, let, let's go ahead and stamp the uh, our little subject matter. Um, let's see. I had everything ready to go here. I had to clean up my area because I couldn't find anything. Now I can't find it because I cleaned up too much. Where did my uh, sea turtles go? Oh my gosh. All right, let me... Oh, here we go. I moved my big pile of stamps here because I just couldn't find anything. I couldn't find my acrylic blocks. Okay, let's go for both turtles on this one, I think. All right. Yeah, just because it is going to be um, relatively dynamic. Okay, so I'm going to put some textures down here, but I don't want them to overpower the turtles, of course. So I'm going to position our little subject matter first. And let's see, let's go like this. Okay. And let's go for the smaller ones on the other side. Okay. The way I position my uh, sea turtles on my um, blocks is it has this little point down there's the hanging point, but the level is are these ones up top. So you just kind of have those going across, you know, straight up there if you're ever curious. Uh, you know, the best thing to do is, you know, is to stamp it out before you, you know, stamp it out on a piece of blotter paper just so you know which, you know, direction they're going in, okay? And you can see their size. Okay, now these ones, because they're smaller, I'm going to stamp them up higher so it looks like they're going off into perspective, you know, larger, smaller, okay? Higher up in the composition usually means, um, farther away like so so we'll do something like I mean you can do more but I, I think I don't know I think that would be overkill with the turtles you know it'd be like a I don't know, whatever a parade of uh you know I don't know hundreds of them maybe it was a, if it was a bigger scene I'd do more I don't know hello bugs all right so we have that Oh, okay, now here, I, I was going to do these textures. Um, a lot of times I do them in black, but this will be sand in here, so why don't we do them in a lighter tone, just so they're not competing so much with um, our little subject matter down there. So um, I'm going to color down here too, but this is going to give me a nice head start here. Um, all right, this is going to be a nighttime scenario, but I am going to do my sand in kind of a a brownish um, color scheme here. So let's pick out some different brown tones like this. Okay, and we'll go with something like this here. Um, let me see something. A lot of my distress inks are getting really dry. Uh, let's go with the walnut stain. So this is an example, good example of mixing and matching, right? 
see this one kind of fits in between something like that and this one goes like right here in terms of the value scale i think desert sand is going to be like super super um light and barely visible i don't know if i'll need it at all but yeah okay it, it shows okay so you're using this kind of like a this is the tiny rocks by the way um tiny rocks small <laughs> because there's another one just called tiny rocks right all right so okay i need to be careful about this because some of these turtles are a little bit um wet still i was thinking about doing them in stays on but i do want to use um some alcohol inks over this whole thing you know particularly in the uh the seaside cove so i went with dye based ink impressions down here uh, maybe i should have went with these with stays on for these and die up here though i don't know and i don't want these like uh processed as, processes to be i don't know more complicated or something like that not, not that that would be complicated but kind of just extra little steps you know so see when i'm going across some of these turtles and then i stamp it over here again i've picked up some of that black and it gets a little blotchy like that it's not really a big deal because it's going to be darker than that anyway but just keep that in mind i found that uh, doing these textural kind of um, applications like this um, can really give you a nice head start in terms of your toning process um, i've seen people do this before kind of in their finished results and uh, over the years uh, but i hadn't really started doing this too much i think it was like last year I guess I can heat set these two. All right, so that was the desert sand. Can you kind of see the lighting scheme kind of happening right here? These are a little bit lighter right here and here. So it's like two kind of diffused spotlights will be on those areas like that. All right, so walnut stain. Okay, I'll do this kind of the same thing. I'll add tone over the top of this as well, but um, You know, you can almost kind of um, do your color and I don't know, whatever texturizing um, and your lighting at the same time. Why not? You know, it's uh, killing two birds with one stone. See that kind of getting you know developing that lighting a little bit more i don't know if i'll use every color you know within this color scheme but uh we'll see how it goes okay this brown right here looks similar to the walnut stain yeah this one's a little bit redder probably and probably brighter too so okay might as well use it if it uh, if it's influencing kind of in the direction that you want it to okay and rich cocoa let's try it okay i remember this is all supposed to be nighttime too and it you know i, I need to darken it quite a bit um so you know if this was going to be something like a you know whatever high noon or something like that um i might not take this process that i'm doing as far with the darker tones So 
So I found that it seems like a lot of people respond to the, uh, I don't know, baby sea turtle imagery I'm finding, you know, from my initial posts of it. And I was thinking about that. I was thinking, um, I think it's just that they're, I don't know why, but my, I'm guessing it's because, you know, I don't know, it's like a, sea turtles are just, you know, it's like a cute moment, you know, they're cute <laughs> looking animals. Okay, so that is that. I think that we've given this Seaside Cove enough time to dry. If it's going to be kind of wet, it's going to be in those darker areas. So I'm just testing for that because I'm going to be using a lot of tone over the top of it. All right, so let's start with that. I'm just going to go with blues up there. Let, let's make it like an aqua um, tonal scene, I think. Um, so let's see here, um, just getting our bearings here. If you've just joined in, this is going to be kind of the scenario here. It's like going into the light <laughs> and you can see what a big mismatch this area is right here from this. I mean, this is like super dynamic. You know, so I'm just going to try to bring as much visual richness into this lower area using um, whatever media I can. Uh, it, it, you know, to, to kind of pair it, it's not to, we're, not, we're never going to match that on, you know, a piece of white cardstock with whatever we do down here. But you can just, just try to jack up the richness down here, you know, as far as you can. And you can kind of... You can kind of bring it up to par from um, a value standpoint, you know, light, dark. So that's what we're going to try to do here. Um, I, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. We'll see if this, even this format kind of looks uh, pretty decent on this first experiment with it. Hello, Jeannie. Little baby sea turtles and starfish from afar. I used to like a. <laughs> we go down to the. Uh, I spent a lot of time as a kid um, in these pristine tide pools um, growing up where I did. Um, Vandenberg Air Force Base um, is on the central coast of California and. Um, I don't know how many square miles um, the Air Force base is out there, but my dad, my dad wasn't in the Air Force, but he worked out on the base, you know, for, uh, you know, government contractors, um, which a lot of the industry around there is based around, you know, they do all the launches in there, like SpaceX now is launching a lot of things from there. Um, you know, a lot of defense industry stuff. Um, but anyways, what I'm getting at here is... Um, we had access to um, all of that coastal area. So um, we'd go down there a lot. We'd go fishing, surf fishing at the beaches. And uh, my favorite thing was kind of just tooling around in the tide pool areas though. And there were certain areas out there with uh, a lot of it was um, just beach area, you know, sand beaches. But some areas there were, um, you know, rocky areas and uh, what do I call it, intertidal areas. And um, so we spent a lot of time out there and, uh, you know, play, seeing, uh, playing around with all the different things, the identification and whatnot. Sea urchins, abalone, clams, sea cucumbers, everything was out there. It was pretty cool. So of course crabs and um, hermit crabs. I don't know, everything in those uh, tidal zones. We used to go clamming and abalone hunting too. It's because it was all, you know, you had to have base access to get out there. So I think in all my time growing up, I don't, we hardly ever saw anyone out there at any of these um, areas. So. I loved it. It was a great, uh, great uh, childhood uh, as far as like, uh, if you like the beach, you know. 
the one thing about up there in that area is it was it was always <laughs> like windy and overcast at the beach it wasn't like a sunny beach at all it, you know I think in past uh, live streams I've mentioned that I think I saw the sun come up I don't know like if I don't know just like a handful of times and if it was out it was like super windy um, kind of that area of um, the central coast is uh, kind of sticking out on a point so it was I don't know if it was that but it was like extra windy all the time blustery and you know usually fairly chilly All right, so anyways, we're going in and adding that tone in there. I am going to add, you know, some brownish tinges down here, but it's supposed to be a nighttime scenario. So um, I'm adding that blue right into that uh, kind of that warmer area. I'm going to try to retain some of this lighter area too. Um, you know, as light reflecting down in the water. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm not going to add too much um, you know, tone to, it would, it would really be reflecting a lot of the colors of the sky. Um, you know, but it's just, it's just not going to happen with this type of paper right there. You know, what am I going to do, you know, down in that water to represent, you know, some of these colors because, you know, I can do like some pink or something like that, but see like that magenta right there, you know, this one, it, it changes, you know what I mean? It's, it's not just magenta, it's, it's red right there it's like a warm red it's like a flame but it's also intensely cold and blue like that and you can just go you know what i mean it's like black and another another time so you just gotta you know just do this scene down here like you would normally do a scene and uh, I, I think don't worry about kind of like oh like, you know what i mean like that one exists if it's you know what i mean this whole scenario of doing scenes and whatnot and stamping we're not trying to replicate nature, you know. Sometimes I see that, and I get it, you know. Uh, people will say, oh, oh you know, um, you wouldn't see that in whatever, you know, scenario. And while we are kind of, you know, I mean, the scenes are, the images are realistic. Um, but, uh, you know, so sometimes people get kind of caught up in that type of uh, notion. But it is kind of a limiting type of... Um, perspective you know we can also say you know if we're going to take it that far we're going to say something like you know if there's someone stamping a card out and it's like a cartoon character we're going to say well you wouldn't see you know like a cartoon walking around in real life and you know you wouldn't see like happy birthday floating in the air either you know <laughs> but when it comes to kind of naturalistic scenes sometimes people kind of you know they get locked into it having to be photo realistic or something like that you know, I would just say, I don't know, you can kind of reference that and you can do things kind of that go towards that type of um, end result, you know, um, but I wouldn't really want 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 to be limited by that um, in every scenario that you, you know, that you would do if you're stamp, you know, stamper. All right, so anyways, this is um, kind of a, a medium tone blue. It's, it's starting to come together. It's starting to glow, isn't it? Like that. Okay. Now, remember, like in these little areas in here, I'm going to hit that with the, uh, you know, the, uh, the alcohol pen. It's just so much uh, of a better tool to get into those tight areas. Okay, but for the large kind of areas to, um, you know, to cover, you know, just do it with your sponge or whatever um, applicator you happen to be using. And just remember to retain some of that lighter area down there, um, it, you know, just for visual richness. Um, if someone's a beginning stamper, uh, scenic stamper in particular, they would see this area's um, like, okay, this is water right here. So they fill it in uniformly. 
Okay, you can do that, especially if you're not going too dark, if it's like a really light tone, but it's better to kind of vary areas, you know, so this is like one area down here, and this is like another area, and then you have lights and darks in each of those areas. If we had sky up here too, you vary that, and you light and color at the same time. Um, I didn't stamp the turtles first because I needed to see where to place the um, the pebbles, right? See, if I put all a bunch of these pebbles like heavy, like right in there, there wouldn't be enough contrast between the turtles and those pebble forms down there. So I needed to see where they were going to go, you know, that's just it. Uh, you can do that with, like, if I was going to stamp, like, a big, you know, like, someone riding a horse, you know, it's a big enough silhouette, but these are, like, the same size as those rocks, so you got to place them first to know where to work around them, otherwise, you know, they would be really obscured by um, a lot of those pebbly rocks uh, type of things, especially if I use black in there, too, which I might do because this is getting darker and darker right here. This blue is really starting to really bring this area to life here. If uh, if you don't have any Marvy inks, all right, hey, I'm all for using whatever you have, okay. But <laughs> if anyone's ever doing um, some color schemes or whatever. And if you're just not able to get, you know, that extra kind of intensity of your colors, okay? You don't need a lot of them, okay? But I would say the Marvy number 10 is a really good way to go. You can't get these pads anymore, but I don't know if the um, Uchida website um, still has, or you, I don't know, wherever you might be able to find these they might be able to, they might have the number 10 re-inker still. So let's say you have, I don't know, whatever, three memento blues or something like that. And you want to go for a really rich, um, deep um, color scheme. And uh, if you want to jack up all those other colors, all you need is one Marvy um, number 10 in there. It's like just super bright. Okay, so you can just add it into a mix of any other brand okay and that goes for a lot of different color schemes if you want to add um like a lot of visual richness and vibrance i'm looking for my scene that i did last night um where did it go i don't even know where it went um but i did that sunset scene and um if you just add in say for example you know you can have distress inks whatever and you can use those for your value scheme. But if you just add in like the Marvy number five yellow underneath it all, it'll just jack up the um, intensity of every one of the other colors that you've used. So you can, you know, what, what this is, it's kind of like, like one of these. And then I don't have it here, but uh, the number nine Marvy pink, okay? And what are these right here? They're like your primary colors, okay? So if you want to go for a really super deep, rich orange, you can use those too. And I'm talking about the re-inkers, okay? You just put a little re-inker drop in here, and then you can get all of your different um, values, um, I mean intensities, really jacked up with um, uh, those three colors. I mean, there's other colors too that kind of, you know, like this brown right here is a really rich one. Um, that just, I, I can't find that last, I don't know, kind of like a couple degrees of intensity in other brands of ink, okay? Now, they might be out there, I just don't know about them. But it just seems like Marvy just gets um, their intensities in terms of um, kind of the general profile of a lot of their colors. It's just a lot more extreme. And when I say a lot, I'm talking about, you know, a few degrees, but I don't know, that can make a difference sometimes, you know, from, uh, you know, something really intense um, to something, I don't know, 
I know these inks really well, so you know what I mean. If I didn't have them, I, I you know I wouldn't miss them. But um, um, uh, get them when you can. <laughs> All right, this is Caribbean blue here. It's really starting to glow really nicely for me. See this right here, which I'm just trying to make it look like the lighting is coming from within the card and out because that's what's happening here because it's so reflective of lighting. You know what I mean? It's actual like light coming out of here because it's like a mirror and it's so intense. So, you know, it's definitely not matched up yet, but we'll get to that um, kind of darkness right up here on the horizon like that. All right, so this is a Prussian blue. Okay. All right. Remember when you get into your darker colors, just remember to retain your uh, whatever light. In this case, it's supposed to be reflected light, but. Uh, by the way, uh, Linda, that was a good question on those turtles. Why didn't I stamp them second, you know, or last, you know? All right, so see, I'm just kind of, you know, creeping that uh, color in there like that. Uh, just because I don't want to get it too dark over here. I mean, we can. We can have those turtles kind of like emerging from, you know, the darkness into the scene, too. Uh, just because there's, you know, there's a lot of them. So if I cover up some, I guess no big deal. All right, Prussian blue is a pretty dark blue. Um, it's usually my last stop in terms of blue schemes before um, black. All right, so I'll get a pretty good saturation going with it. Um, the thing going through my head right now is I'm just wondering if I could go, if I should go a little bit more aqua in here. Um, kind of a warmer blue and I'm not sure you know what I should do okay well, now I, I'm talking out loud whatever um, thinking out loud I think what I should do is I should go back to this desert sand and streak some of this in here okay just to get a little bit more warm or bring an, uh, whatever, an element of warmth into it. See, uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to expand the temperature range. Okay, so we have light and dark in here. That's the value range. And I'm playing around with temperature a little bit in here, but let's push it a little bit more because I want a lot of the ranges of um, yeah, the different aspects of color to be fairly wide just because you know there's so much going on up here in other words i don't want this bottom portion to look you know like absolutely boring compared to you know such a dynamic area up top you know with that uh holographic so um it's gonna overpower it but uh i don't know we'll, we'll see if we can um we'll see what we can do as far as um bringing this uh, kind of up to, par, you know, up to uh, not par, but as far as it can go. Okay, so seeing this right here, I put a little bit more warmth in there. Like that. I don't know, maybe the baby sea turtles, you know, just having them down there, maybe they're, they'll, maybe they'll, be, you know, they hold their own because they're kind of our ten, an attention getter too. All right, let's see here. Let's go to black, all right? Here we go. Hello, Joy.
Joy, you can do a a, sea, a, a cave sea turtle uh, scene. <laughs> oh, vintage scrap girl, your your turtles are are on the way. All right, see that right down there? It's kind of adding that. Yeah, I wasn't gonna add in too much foreground in here, but I, I guess I can. You know, I was thinking um, in those reflection card formats. Um, I have that area down here um, that kind of blocks off the ref what I'm usually doing as a reflective area, but on this one, it's. I guess we can add that foreground down here still. Um, if you just joined in, this is like an experiment, like a total experiment, um, as far as kind of uh, playing around with that idea of that folded um, kind of area and, uh, you know, kind of expanding on, I don't know, whatever these, you know, these two areas are, you know, to represent. I mean, something like this would be really cool too. I'm just, I'm just going with this one up here, but I think this one right here would just look cool with um, a nighttime sky. And if you put a moon right up here, you know, just on regular cardstock, and then you have this scenario like this, you know, you'd have this moon kind of rising up here, but I don't know, I do like this paper and I haven't used it for a while, so I just thought I would use it. I'm gonna put some um, stars up here too. And then I did the this one quote too. I might put this quote up here like that. I didn't want to use the same quote, but the, this other quote that's like the first step, you know, um, type of thing would be better, but um, I didn't want to use that quote like on every single, you know, um, sea turtle card that I ever do. <laughs> Although it would be better, you know, but um, I don't know. But, it, but anyways, I was thinking that quote might be good up there to um, just kind of, um, um, I don't know, cover up some of that, you know, that action up top there like that, you know, because like I said, it, it is like really loud. So you can put like a, or you can stamp like a word stamp up there too, you know, if you have something that can stick to that type of, um, you know, that holographic foil, um, maybe a... Um, stays on white pigment ink might work. I don't know. There's a lot of colors that I need to get around to getting re-inkers for or pads that I just haven't in a while. Um, but uh, yeah, that white um, quote up there, you know, within that um, holographic area, it, you know, if I just stamped it directly on here, I think it would look like it was kind of like floating up here, which would be kind of cool. All right. Does anyone have, by the way, um, a Stazon white pigment ink pad? I'm just curious to know if anyone would know if, you know, if I stamp this something up here with the Stazon, if I didn't get it right, or if it didn't look right, I was wondering if I could wipe it off somehow, because this stays on pigment here, so I wasn't quite sure if the stays on um, cleaner would work on this pad, because I, I don't know, I think it's the only stays on pigment, right? Unless there's a stays on pigment black. Um, but I don't know, if you know that, let me know. All right, so this is the black here, okay, and I'm, I've am i added a lot of tone on here, so um, it's not applying really fast, but it's good because it allows me to apply it kind of in a nice gradual way. In other words, I'm kind of applying this black wet ink onto a damp surface, so it's just not transferring onto the surface real fast, and that's how you can get these really nice kind of nice gradual applications of black because you're kind of a, applying like a, um, I don't know, like a 5% gray at a time, unless your pad is like super juicy wet, okay? Yeah. 
Okay, I think that might do it. Let's see. All right, it's kind of getting there, I think, a little bit. I wonder if this is, I wonder if this is too light right in here. What do you think? Maybe I should, maybe that's too much there, huh? We need to darken that in just a touch. Because I, I feel like the attention, you know, is going right up here instead of it being down here. Okay. Uh, let's see. So what you do is you don't go in here with black. You go in there with, the, you know, your lightest tone because that's, that's like white right there. So um, what was the lightest blue? <laughs> I think it was the... Uh, uh, memento summer sky. Let me just, I'm just going to use my uh, salvia here. Or, all right, well, yeah, let's go with the salvia blue. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to block that out, like, or not block it out, but I'm going to tone that out like this. Okay, I, I mean, it's not, you know, I didn't do it, you know, I'm not blocking it out completely and, you know, getting rid of that light, you know, kind of the illuminated area right there. But I, Let's see. Let's see if I've taken that enough. It's a little bit better. See how much lighter this is right here? So this looks like it's going off in the distance. And I, that lighting right there would probably represent something a little bit, you know, lighter up in the sky, like a moon or something like that. Um, let's go with the Caribbean blue here. I'll do this right here. Okay, let's test it again. This would be cool, like, you know, if you do it, um, if you had clouds up here too, I think that would really be cool. Or if someone took it like a, if you printed out like a photo of a moon rising or something like that, you can do a photo um, stamping scene with that photo up here. I think that'd be kind of interesting. All right, let's see. Eh, it looks better. Okay. Let me adjust this right here. Let's go with a little bit of a darker um, black right here where these islands are. Okay, so I'll take a, my black right around it here a little bit further, farther, further, one of those. Okay, so let's see here. I stamp the Seaside Cove a little bit down. It's like down an eighth of an inch too, so let me fill that in a little bit more. See, I'm usually not used to kind of capping off this top, which I almost am here in regular scenes. So, you know, I'm adjusting a little bit with what I would normally do. Okay. So let's see there. That's a little bit better. Okay. Look at that. That bottom area is kind of reflecting up there. You just have to look at it like this, though. <laughs> Don't look at it like that, you know, where you get that area of reflecting in that foil like that. All right, so let's see, let's, okay. So here's what I'm doing right here, okay? So when, you, when you're doing these different areas, it, it, or even if it's within like one scene, okay, and you're talking about sky, you know, I'm talking about like a, just a flat scene like this. What I'm usually trying to do is I'm bringing kind of what I think about as like a needle and thread between areas. You're trying to bring um, something to relate to whatever you have in a scene. So, I mean, this could be a, you know, I could have a cabin up here or something like this next to it. I mean, it's not going to have sea turtles or something like that. Well, I, I don't know, maybe it's in, you know, I don't know, whatever, some island somewhere. You can have a hut right here, and let's say it's going to be brown tones or something like that. Just so it doesn't stand out so distinctly, I'd probably bring in a little bit of blue tones into it or something like that, and those brown tones would be down here. It's like a needle and thread. You're kind of Unite, unifying um, these areas, and it could be very subtle too. You know, you have that desert sand down here, or something like that. Okay, so in this case, um, right here, I'm trying to the things that are unifying this right now. It's 
these darker areas down here. So we have this value range up here of something very light, and that's light right here. I mean, there's some of these blues up there too, you know? Um, so you have color, and then you have value, okay? So um, what I'm gonna do next is we'll bring um, kind of a textural um, element into this scenario here. So I'm gonna put in like these little white dots up there and that would represent stars, you know, up in that sky area. But down here, it could just represent um, splashes, highlights or whatever um, down in this, you know, these areas right in here, okay? So that's another kind of needle and thread that you're running through the two different elements. I might use a little bit of pigment ink down here in the ways to give it a softer kind of, you know, frothy look, you know, across, you know, some of that, those cresting little peaks right there, you know, that spin drift. And I can do that up here too in the sky. I can put, you know, maybe make a couple of these little stars that end up up here, have them kind of, little, you know, a little bit more like they're glowing. So that would have that element of softness up here and down below, you know what I mean? So there's, you're just given air, things like that. You're given a few things in common and in it, and it really doesn't matter what it is, okay? Um, you can just, I don't know, use whatever. You can have, you know, a bit of glitter down here, and then you have up there, you know, you have a glitter star of the same, uh, whatever, color or texture. Um, but, it, you know, it doesn't have to be kind of a mystery of anything like that when you're doing whatever cards, scenarios, or anything like that. You're just giving... Uh, you're doing, bringing commonality into, you know, different spaces. Okay, uh, before I get to this one, before, uh, before I forget, let me hit this with some um, alcohol inks, which is the reason why I stamped everything out in uh, dye-based inks instead of uh, the stays on. Okay, so underneath these waves right here, We'll add um, some tone like this. Kind of makes the little crest of the waves um, stand out a little bit more. These little waves right here are just supposed to, you know, in this scenario like this, they're just, you know, little, I don't know, whatever, knee high, you know, little crests. But if you put like a surfer standing kind of like right there, you know what I mean? It changes the uh, the scale of them. Oh, good morning, Kathy. <laughs> what time is it there for you? Hello, Kathy. Kathy K and Kathy M. I, I, uh, Kathy M, I was asking what time. Oh, yeah, Joy, yeah, you inspire, you, you and your mom inspired me with the, the cave uh, um, pieces that, yeah, that you did. But yeah, yeah, um, you guys ought to try that with the... Uh, if you have, I can't remember if you had some of that printable vinyl. I think you guys seem to have everything, but uh, yeah, it was the uh, any any type of those printable vinyls like that for a cave scene. I think it's really cool. It was kind of it was kind of weird to work with, you know, and it came together with the 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 detailing on that one. If you guys don't know it or didn't see it, um, what Joy's referring to was the. Uh, was the ice, what I, what I call an ice cave scene. I don't know if it looked like ice, you know, when I was done, but uh, the um, this paper right here, um, kind of, I always thought it looked like, I don't know, it's like shards, uh, right, Linda? You know, I think that's what you referred to it as, like shards of a, or something like that. I think, I don't know, I can't remember what you said, but uh, yeah, it, to me, when I saw that, I thought, I don't know, in, in terms of a scenic stamp, and I was thinking of ice or something like that, something cold, you know, because, uh, you know, what, a, you know, 
I mean, you can stamp whatever you want on anything, but, um, you know, something in context, I was thinking, what else would that kind of be? You know, and then if you're using it everywhere, you know, from it's going to be in the sky and the, you know, land, if you're using it like that. So I was thinking of an enclosed area where you'd have something kind of uniformly wherever you are within that space. So I was thinking cave. Um, but yeah, it was, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's such a loud paper. Um, uh, if you guys end up doing it, um, you know, expect, uh, expect it to look pretty weird right through the process. At least it did for me until I got to the white paint pen where you're kind of redefining kind of edges and things like that a little bit more. And that's where it came together for me. Okay, I put a little bit of a darker blue down here and I'm just going in with a lighter blue to blend that out, which I, I do a lot of times. Instead of using a blender pen, um, most of the times I use a lighter version of whatever color I want to blend out. Okay, now sometimes I mean, it, I'll go to the blender, um, but most of the times I just like to blend out using a lighter value of that color that I want to, you know. Um, a lighter color that I want to blend. <laughs> okay. All right, so that is that. Um, okay, so here's the uh, paint pen now. And let's start adding little white dots, okay? Um, let's see here. This is a really dark scene. Are you I think it looks pretty good. A lot of times I don't go this dark, but you know, cute. But I, since I'm working around this paper, it's kind of, I did this time, but I don't know. Maybe I'll have to do that more in the future. Okay, so little highlights like that. Hopefully you can pick up some of this right here. Hopefully it's reading on your screens. If you're watching like on a, like a phone or something like that where this is really tiny, I don't know if you can see this, but I'll try to uh, create a decent amount of contrast. What I'm doing is I'm adding this over some of the crest of the wave like that, okay? And see these waves in here, I've kind of, working with that alcohol ink, you know, and being able to color underneath things like that um, in a really detailed area, I'm able to keep um, these cresting waves lighter like that, okay, than just coloring everything with a, you know, sponge or a paper towel in my case. And this is the um, extra fine um, acrylic paint pen, a 0.7 millimeter. Um, you can use your white gel pen, you know, if you have one. Um, back in the day, you know, when, I don't know, we were using all kinds of things, um, some people would use correctional pens for this type of work. It looked a little different because, you know, correctional pens aren't kind of designed to be like super detailed, but, you know, I, I saw people, you know, use it and use it very effectively. They just got kind of used to using them. So they were able to kind of manipulate um, smaller uh, marks with it, you know, and applications and, you know, do it in really detailed areas. And they, they I don't know if they use the same pen that they were doing with detailing, um, but, um, or highlights, but some people got kind of that starry snowfall type of texturing by taking a correction pen and they, I don't know, they had like another stick here, or I don't know where they were hitting, but they would hit it like this and then it would splatter some of that correctional fluid um, onto their pieces. And it, I don't know, it, it looked, you know, just fine to me. All right, so I'm putting these little turtles in a kind of a glistening, you know, little spotlit areas. So I'm adding a few more highlights in the lighter area. Okay, and then you kind of taper it off by um, 
spacing out your dots as it moves into the darkness, okay? So more heavy in the lighter areas and spaced out as you move away from them. That way you get kind of a varied application of, I don't know, whatever reflective light like that. I don't know if you can see that down here. See that right in between there, it's like a half inch or something like that. But right here, you know, in the lighter areas, it's, I don't know, 16 of an inch or whatever. You know, you can cluster it too or something like that if you want to. Okay, but here's these little dots again, like I said, and let's do the same thing. Let's bring that same element up here. You can do it by hand, you know. Inevitably, I'll probably be adding some stars up here by hand because I want to, you know, go for a little bit of a change of scale um, with these little, you know, starry touches like this, but... Um, Okay, so up here, <laughs> this is, okay, I'm trying to remember here. Sometimes I, I was thinking about adding these little crystals in. I think I'm going to add in a couple of these at least. Um, but sometimes when I, when I splatter paint this, okay, with the little stars up here, and then I add in the crystals afterwards, I can't tell where I've put my little glue dot because it's like, you know, it's amongst a bunch of little white dots in there anyways, so it's hard to see. So I'm going to do this first. All right. Okay, so it only took me like two years to figure this out just now, and you're watching the, uh, me do this. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe some of that splatter is going to get on top of, you know, some of these um, crystals, but, uh, you know, who cares? Okay, so I'll go like that. Um, let me see. There's um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, do you know, exactly eight star, um, crystals every time. <laughs> I always tell people you can kind of write things out in um, stars. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool, you know, um, if you're splatter painting some sky area. And then if you're doing, um, if you're giving something to someone, um, like a card, It'd be cool if maybe the crystals are in the form of their initials or something like that, you know. It would, I don't think it would look hokey or anything like that. Because, um, you know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it doesn't have to be, like, super, you know, defined or anything like that. It can kind of be like a, like a hidden little... Um, element uh, within the scene. Okay. As I was saying last night, the hardest thing about um, doing cards sometimes is getting these little crystals upright here. They like these tiniest of ones. Sometimes I'll pour some out and it's um, like there's 20 of them that are upside down and there's like one right side up. Okay, okay, that's one of my tiniest little bits of uh, glue, I, I don't know. All right, so there's eight, no, seven, seven here. Uh, things are supposed to be uh, applied in odd numbers anyways, right? <laughs> okay, so that is that. I, can, I don't know, we can add a crystal down here too. All right, since I'm doing these little crystals on here, um, If you mail this to someone, okay, just, you know, put a piece of paper in between here, a piece of cardstock or something like that, so that when you fold this over, it's not like putting dents into this lower section down here. All right, so this is my um, Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. If you have white gesso or something like that, that works too. The Bleed Proof White is really a great... Um, medium to have in your, uh, you know, set of tools that you work with, though. Um, illustrators use it. Uh, calligraphers use it. Um, it applies, but it, it dries, like, really, really fast. You can reconstitute it, and it, you know, I've had 
the bottle that I first started doing this had been sitting around for 20 years, you know, somewhere in my supplies. Okay, I don't want this over the trees because I don't want it to look like snow. So I'm just going to, here, instead of my hand, I might cover it up like that. And, you know, just an old toothbrush. It's kind of hard to, you know, it might, it might be hard for you to find a toothbrush these days. Like all those toothbrushes have those kind of gum stimulators on them. If it's a, you know, not electric. Um, but um, we had a heck of a time trying to find a, one. One time someone said, hey, they're having a hard time finding a toothbrush, you know. I'm just thinking, what the heck, you know. And then I, I think I went to Target or something like that and was just looking around. And it's like, even the, like the cheapest ones had like those little plastic, you know, rubber gum stimulators in here. And not just the, uh, you know, the standard bristles or whatever. I was like, wow. And then I looked on like Amazon. And that was hard to find on there too. I, I don't know, we found something somewhere. Or she found something. Okay, but anyways, here's these little stars up here. But look at that. You know, doesn't that kind of look cool up there? I think some of them look a little bit closer than others, too, when you do stuff like that. But I'm going to add in a little bit of variation here in terms of size, because sometimes when you splatter paint, I did get some size variation in here. Um, that's pretty good, but let's add a couple of these in here that are a little bit larger. And the acrylic pen paint pen will dry and adhere to this surface without any problem. Oh, okay, so I'm bringing some of that white in there. Let's do this here, here too. Okay, so remember I was saying about kind of that needle and thread type of concept. Okay, so these types of colors are down in this area, right? You know, the blue tones and whatnot. So I'm going to add some of that color up here in the form of stars. So it's just one of those little extra things that I think can make these two very different surfaces kind of relate to each other in a way. You, you, you just give, give them something in common. You know, you know, we're not trying to, like I said, we're not gonna match these things. There's no way that's ever gonna happen. I guess in some ways too, I guess if, if you wanted to, you can do things like you know, like these little splashes down here, maybe like a silver pen would kind of be interesting because this is like a metallic, right? So you can do something like that down there. Or if you had like a word stamp, you know, right down here in the corner, you can do it in silver, you know, to match some of this. In this case, this one is kind of a silvery surface. It's hard to tell. Um, but when I look at this, you know, just without, you know, certain from certain angles, it looks silver to me. All right, so let's add some of these little little starry elements in blue here. Okay. And I won't go overboard with this. Sometimes I go overboard with my stars. It'd be kind of interesting to add one of those little eight-pointed stars up there as a focal point. Okay, let me see what's going on here. All right. See those stars up there? Do you see the blue ones a little bit? You know, they, I don't know, they, I think they're a little bit more recessed because they're not as light as the white ones. Okay. So you give them that, a little bit of depth in there. And I think when you do those little types of, uh, I don't know, whatever, speckles, patterns like that, um, you give that area a little bit of depth up there. And to me, it kind of, it doesn't stabilize these lights, but if you don't have something up there that's kind of stable like that, like those stars, it's like everything is kind of in motion up there. I like to have these elements in there that are just kind of, I don't know, they add a little bit of stability. They're not moving around, in other words, okay? Like that. But, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, you know, I don't know, maybe, you know, I think the cloud thing or something like this, something mellow would probably be matching this, you know, it's like these, the baby sea turtles are going to, you know, like the, like the discotheque or something like that, the nightclub instead on the horizon. <laughs> I mean, I, I, some of these tones look pretty cool though. Um, like the, 
uh, I just had it there. I can't, I can't get it back. There was like this, when it was like all like light blue in there. I don't know, like, like that, you know, right there. So, um, see that matches that base area a lot more because it's all blues and greens like that. I don't know, that looks kind of cool though. Um, all right, so let me see, let me get my bearings here. Um, let's go and add in a little bit of extra texturing. And I think we're almost done. I'm not sure about that quote. I'll, I'll see if that quote looks any, you know, decent up there. It might just block everything out and kind of, you know, wreck that sky area if I put it up there. But um, I think it'll be okay. Let me see. I need a Q-tip here. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot. Let's add in. Uh, let's add in the... I'm going to add in a little bit of extra foreground in here. Let me do that after I do this mist here. Um, okay, so um, I'm going to add in a little bit of softness with my white pigment ink here. All right. I always say this, but I, I never know if someone's watching this for the first time um, or any of my videos, but I'm applying this in a very, very dry brush application. Okay, my pad, my this pad here is not real wet, okay? So um, almost 100% of the time when anyone ever does this, they add, like, a, they're getting blobs of paint, okay? Because they go in directly into their white ink pad, which a lot of people just don't use very often. And those these things can sit around in your, you know, craft room for 20 years sometimes. And if you don't use them, sometimes they're, like, super, super wet and juicy still, you know, because they're just a thick style of ink and a lot of them are oil based too so they dry really slow okay so just you know take you know dab off a lot of that you know test it on a you know black you know or a dark piece of paper and see how much you're applying it because the the spirit of this application is kind of more in the spirit of adding like a dry medium you know you want to think about it like you're adding like powder or something like that onto a scene and you want it light and airy because it's just supposed to be like little mist, okay? Um, all right, so I'm just, there's not a lot of areas to add in on mine because I didn't retain a lot of the white, you know, lightness of the paper. Let's add, let's put a couple of these little turtles in, in the mist. I know it's nature and everything, but uh, don't you hate when you see those documentaries of baby sea turtles going to the uh, ocean and they're, you know, it's like descended upon, you know, with the, uh, you know, the seagulls eating them up and, you know, even like hermit crabs eating them. <laughs> I watched this one where there's, it was on some island somewhere. I don't know where it was, off the coast of uh, South America or something like that. And there's like these all these like land snakes, you know, slithering out and, you know, nabbing them. <laughs> when I was a little kid watching, it was like, well, why doesn't the cameraman do something about this, you know? It was a travesty. <laughs> All right, so that's a little bit of that. I don't know if you can see that right in there, but it's like, off those waves. It's a little bit softer right in there. Okay. Now let's do that on a couple of these stars up here. Maybe it'd be, you know, maybe it would be good to do that, you know, underneath, um, you know, the most twinkly of stars, which would have been those um, crystals in there. But, you know, uh, so be it. They're already in there. So let me add a little bit. I'm doing this really slow on this. If I get too much on this foil, you can just wipe it right off. Okay. In fact, you can even wipe it off after it dries on this type of surface right here. I'm using the, the Brilliant Zinc, which dries on here without any problem. But if you're using something like a, you know, an oil-based white pigment ink, just your regular white pigment ink, it'll dry on here. If you stamp something in an oil-based pigment ink on here with that thick application of pigment ink, it's probably not going to dry. But this will dry. And with this type of application, you can choose to spray seal it or not. So just that little bit like that. See, some of these are kind of glowing now in there. And 
I don't think you need to spray seal this just that little bit like that because it's not like someone is going to get your card, you know, that you give, you know, whoever you give it to. And they're, they're not going to take their finger and wipe it off like that, you know, like, oh, look at this, you know, and do that, you know. I, I don't think it, maybe if you give it to some little kid, they, you know, they might do something like that. But I don't think it's something that you really have to worry about. That type of, no, if I did like a big area with, you know, white pigment ink, you might have to do something like that. But see how those little stars kind of glow up in the sky a little bit more? See it even up there, that little tiny bit like that? But see, from a textural standpoint, no, those little glowing little soft elements like that are kind of right down in here too. You know, some of it's on that, uh, you know, over these white dots, you know what I mean? So those types of things right there, you know, are something in common. This almost, you know what I mean? This almost looks like this mist, you know, this Milky Way type of thing going on down here. And you have this same type of, you know, patterning along these areas right there. So like I said, it's something, you know, something in common, I guess, between those two areas. And let's go in and finish this off with, um, let's go with the dye based. You know, I've been doing some of my foregrounds with stays on lately and the stays on to me looks almost like after it dries, it looks real shiny and maybe even more dimensional. Um, let me just do that on here. So I don't know, it looks even closer to me sometimes, like the scene that I did last night um, looked like that. Okay, so I just need to be careful not to wiggle this. I mean, that's always the case, but since it's in stays on, right? Especially, I don't want a big blurred image. Okay, so I can get that like that. And let's see here. I don't know if I'm gonna add this in here. Oh, actually, I don't know if I left space because the, uh, you know, I have those crystals in here. I forgot about this. Yeah, maybe it's for the best. I don't. I didn't know if I was going to add this up there. Anyways, I thought it might be. Yeah. You know, yeah, that would be intrusive, huh? Yeah, that wouldn't work. That's too much. I thought it might help because I thought this would be a little bit too kind of loud up there. But I think I don't know. I think this. I think it looks fine up there. Uh, the sky. <laughs> Another thing you can do too is um, what I used to do on this type of thing is I would add, um, I would block off the um, two corners up here with some black brilliance ink um, and I would let it dry, but then I would spray seal it. Okay. But I think I'm just going to leave it like that. You know, it's like a, you know, a, a disco, you know, the turtle, baby turtle disco night like that. Here, I'll hold it like that. It looks um, a little bit better. <laughs> okay, so here's what, you know, someone would say, hey, you know, when do you, you'd never see like northern lights around, uh, you know, baby sea turtles and not in the hemisphere. Well, this, uh, my answer to that would, well, this is northern lights. These are more like light. Um, someone showed me a picture of um, um, light pillars, you know, um, you know, this other type of um, kind of lighting phenomenon. It's usually coming off from like some kind of a city lights or something like that going through the fog, but sometimes you get, I don't know what you call it, refraction or something like that um, up in the sky, um, you know, where the, uh, I don't know, whatever, I guess lights bending or something like that. Um, and look, I don't know, look it up. Like, I think it's called light pillars. I don't think it was light columns, but um, I don't know. I think that looks interesting enough but anyways here's the format right here i think we can do like little scenes like this right and then you can stamp whatever you want in here you know you know that's going to represent your horizon right there but you can do like mountains or anything like this i'm saying not on this paper right here but on whatever you want you can do like photo stamping yeah you know, let me show you what this would look like with a photo in here too 
I'm gonna put the photo in there. So, you know, a bunch of you are gonna say, oh, I like that better, you know? But let's see, you know, you can go with something like this. I haven't stamped on this, but you know, you can have um, something like this, you know, I would balance it off. You gotta balance it off, you know, or put some, you know, trees up there, you know, or you can, I would have, you know, this is, this is like high noon, you know, but you know, so I wouldn't have this like a, as a nighttime type of thing. But I think this, you know, type of format would be really cool. You can even put like a, like a sailboat or something like this. You can put islands right here, whatever you want in there. And this can just represent, you know, this surface right here. But like I said, if you're going to have this kind of folded area, you know, it, chances are it'd probably, you know, it'd probably be something, you know, to have to do with sky like that on that 90 degree angle like that. So it's like a, I don't know, it's like a backdrop, you know, um, in there. So I think that would be kind of cool. Look at that. That's kind of cool like that, isn't it? This is four by six though. This is four and a quarter by five and a half, but um, I don't know. I think there's a lot of different possibilities right here. Um, on this area down here, I probably wouldn't go with too many things like, you know, I don't, I wouldn't have a tree right here or something like this. Um, I don't know if that would work. You know, you'd have your trees kind of rising up from this. Not, you know, not with the baby sea turtles, but I'm just saying, you know, some water type of scenario right here. But this could be land or whatever. And I think, you know, plopping that photograph up there, you know, might be kind of interesting. Or whatever you want to stamp up there. It could be just a moon, you know, on a piece of paper or something like that. But anyways, this scene's all about this. <laughs> that looks really crazy like that. Like I said, I like it like that, you know, with those um, kind of greenish to tones like that. But look at that right down here. This is glossy. So you get a little bit of those um, kind of lights kind of reflected down there. I can see now, you know, to, you know, some degree like that. It does look like it's kind of reflecting off the water a little bit. Huh. All right. So anyways, there's, there's your uh, baby sea turtle, you know, light follow it. What, you know, whatever, following the light um, uh, scene scenario, folded card piece. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, second shade of blue and your audience hasn't a clue as to what colors you're using. Oh, Rebecca, yeah, I just went through, I already went through kind of the colors that I used on there or would be going through, and I just said I'm going from light to dark, so anyway, yeah, unless you have those specific colors, but I just showed, I always show the colors that I'm going to go through in a range of them, like that, and you just say you start from light to dark, but the biggest thing about this, Rebecca, unless you have all those specific colors, it's about what I taught in my classes is not being kind of uh, stuck with, you know, specifics. It's about the type of colors, and I covered that as well. You know, you go with, you don't mix and match solvent inks and pigment inks or something like that and dyes. As long as there's the same type, you just go with your whatever color schemes you're working through. So you mix and match but you just pick out your colors. And that's the first thing that I always taught in my classes, um, making things visual and just lining them up from light to dark. All right. And the reason why you make things visual um, is so that you don't, a lot of people, if they haven't done this type of kind of color scenario before in terms of working through ranges of tones, um, a lot of people might say, okay, I'm gonna go with the sunset scene. And then I'm going to make it yellows and reds or something like that. So they might jump from something like this to this, which you can do, right? But if you make it visual and you pull your media out and you can see it like that, unless you're really familiar with all your inks and say, okay, I'm going to go with the uh, number 10 yellow right now. And I'm going to go with the 43 next and the number seven orange. You know what I mean? Make it visual for yourself and you can see the range of tones, whatever you're using. So um, with the walnut stain or something like that, you know, that looks like that right there if we're mixing and matching. Or if you don't have, you know, something like that tone, let's go with a memento. What looks darker between these two, you know? If you can't tell with that, then you just do a little sample like that and you just do it like that. 
So, you know, you mix and match like that. Or you can, you know, if you have all the same tones, you have all the whatever, what's the, Catherine Pooler rings or something like that. You just line them up. And if it merges you know, and matches, then it'll match on your card just fine in terms of this layering style of technique. But just don't go in there with like a, you know, uh, I don't know, like, uh, you know, go with something like, you know, here's a uh, yellow dye base stink and here I'm going with a hybrid orange and then this red or something like that. You might be able to merge those together in some fashion, but it's not going to be in this technique right here. So keep that in mind, everyone. Don't be stuck with, uh, you know, specifics. Like I said, uh, you know, a lot of people don't have like even Marvy inks anymore, so, you know. But uh, keep that in mind there. Um, let's see. Hello, Laura. <laughs> You're never late, Laura. Now I'm sad, those poor turtles. <laughs> That's what the, the, those, all those documentaries are like that. Unless you watch some, you know, where they, uh, I don't know, it's like they, I don't know, where some are endangered and they kind of create these lanes, you know, with this netting over it so they can get out, you know, making their way out into the water at least. <laughs> oh, let's see. Yep, yeah, a pop-up right here. So, Laura, I don't know if you saw this. Did you just join in or just, you know, show you this before? But, okay, now do you see this card right down here? You know, where this is going to, you know, kind of merge in like that? I'm going to spray this. I'm going to spray this one with my triple thick Krylon so that this already glossy cardstock is going to get even glossier. Okay, it doesn't, you don't have to go with the triple thick. I just happen to have some of it. But see, it'll kind of match this. Eh, I don't know if it'll match it, but it gets, this is like super glossy up here, and this will get, all these colors down here will get even more intense and glossy. So again, you know, it's that needle and thread type of thing, you know, where you have um, certain traits of what's going on in this area. Yeah, you just have to use more and more of them, the more kind of different, um, you know, two separate areas of a card is going to be. Now this one's, you know, an extreme version of it because we're using two different, completely different types of um, surfaces here. But, you know, even when it's within a scene, you know, think about your common, you know, your common types of areas. And it, it, that's one way to work too. You know, sometimes I see cards and, you know, they might have everything that's, you know, really quite separate from one another, okay? And it looks different, okay? And there's a lot of um, separation that's happening. That's its own, you know, kind of aesthetic, and that has its own place too. So you can do these types of things where, you know, you're kind of creating um, commonality, but you might also be doing um, kind of a different style of look, you know, that might be creating kind of... Um, contrasts, you know, so there's, um, the, I don't know what they call it, um, dramatic, uh, dramatic, um, oh, dramatic balance and dramatic imbalance too. And they both have their, you know, they both have their own kind of, you know, um, strengths, you know, so most of the times what I'm doing in my scenes is I'm trying to balance things out as opposed to going for imbalance. But uh, on this one right here, you know, there's a lot of imbalance going on between this type of surface and this one down here. And I'm just trying to get them a little bit closer, you know. They're still far apart in terms of their surface qualities and textural, for, you know, things that are going on in there. But they're just a little bit closer, you know, than they were from the, uh, you know, the start, uh, you know, with something like that, so. You know, anyways, um, yeah, further, further test to go. I want to do um, more of these kind of these interior folded cards like this with, um, you know, that photo stamping too. You can do a really quick scene, I think, um, going with, you know, a photo top area like this, you know, maybe stamping out, I don't know if it's tropical, you can go with those um, 
palms, palm islands again, or something like that up there. You know, a couple birds up here, or a quote would be really great right up here. Um, you know, if you have the photograph for that. And, uh, you know, this area down here would be really kind of minimal. Maybe do it in, a, I can do it in a, oh, like a semi-gloss or something like that with uh, colored pencils or something of that sort, you know, for a really quick um, compositional arrangement um, in this format like this. But I think it'd be really dynamic, you know, someone opening up that card like that and seeing that, you know, type of scenario like that. I think it'd be really cool. So... Anyway, that is that. Thanks for joining in. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know, you know, play around with these uh, little, uh, I don't know what to call this one. It's not like a reflection card like this. I don't know. It's not really like a pop-up card, you know, or either. I don't know. Some think of a good name <laughs> for that type of uh, interior. Card. Someone called it an inside out card too, or something like that. Horizon card? I don't know. Maybe something like that. Um, might be kind of a, a good name. But, anyways, hope you have a great rest of evening, weekend. Uh, someone said it was morning for you. Hope you have a great rest of day. And uh, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. I'll format this later with, you know, the specific um, stamps and uh, um, uh, holographic. Uh, cardstock that was used in here. So uh, get that posted uh, sometime tonight. Anyways, thanks again, everyone.